Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to welcome you to our special meeting tonight. It is May 23rd, 2024. If everyone could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Hello. Trustee Mitchell? Present. Trustee Middleton? Trustee Njenga? Here. Trustee Gale? Here. Trustee White? Present. Trustee Saunders? Here. VP Kelly? Here. And President Kerwin? Here. Okay. Our first order of business is to swear in our newest trustees. Donna Maribel, if you just meet me to the front up here. Please raise your right hand. Okay. I. I. Donna Marable. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I would faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of school board trustee. The duties of school board trustee. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my abilities. Thank you. Thank you. just like to thank Mount Vernon for putting their confidence in me and I promise you that I will do my best to represent each and every one of you. Um, I was a member of Mount Vernon Federation of Teachers so I know why you're here tonight and we get it, we get it. And I would like to introduce to you my kindergarten teacher when I was at Robert Fulton School. She was, it was, is now Edward Williams, but this is Ms. Frances Wayne, who also served as a school board trustee. And she's here with me tonight. I want to say good evening to everyone and how proud I am to be here. Going back many, many years ago, not too many, but enough. At uh, uh, what was the name it of us? It was Robert Fulton. And Robert was. Fulton, and it became Williams School. Eddie Williams was a great principal there, and I was called in to take over a kindergarten class of 31 students, and Donna was one. And, and we have many, uh, several others who are working in this district. So I'm very, very. Uh, proud to see her here this evening. Uh, she was always a leader in kindergarten. The whole 31 students were leaders. They all took charge. So I hope that we will move forward in this district. Uh, I've done my part. I'm done. But I am hoping that we will continue to educate children and to be ethical in the process. I thank you so much. Thank you. And here, you can come around this way. You can have a seat right over in the corner. Pauline Thompson and Jenga. Thank you. Thank you. 
I, I, Helene Thompson Jenga, solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, of the United States, and the Constitution, and the Constitution of the State of New York, of the State of New York, and that I would faithfully discharge, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of school board trustee, the duties of school board trustee, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Vice President Kelly. Good evening, Mount Vernon community. Before we begin tonight's special board meeting, I would like to quickly say just a few words regarding union negotiations and the events that transpired on Tuesday, May 21st. Negotiations have been ongoing and most recently, recently have been very active with the Mount Vernon Federation of Teachers over a new contract. The current agreement between the parties expired on June 30th, 2022. While a new agreement is being worked on, it is important to note that the district has a legal obligation to continue to honor the terms and provisions of the contract until a new contract is reached. These terms include granting step movement, this is based upon years of service, and lane changes based upon the completion of graduate course credits. Within the existing salary schedule, which has resulted and will continue to result in annual automatic base salary increases for certain staff members beyond the date of expiration of the contract. So although there is no current contract, our teachers are receiving pay increases. No. No. The school district is legally not able to speak and provide comments or opinions about these negotiations or the contract status. So when you wonder why the district is not commenting while union members are voicing their displeasure, that is why. I can however say that I am looking forward to a day sometime soon when our teachers who are valued and respected once again have a contract. We will continue to work with the Mount Vernon Federation of Teachers to reach a settlement that meets district and board goals while enhancing our educational program. Regarding the events on Tuesday, I would like to say how personally disturbed and disappointed I was in everyone's behavior. The events that transpired created an unsafe situation for everyone and required us to increase security for this meeting here today. Commenting to the board is one thing, but I think we all can agree that Tuesday was unsafe. It was unsafe situation that could have become potentially volatile. And that is why the meeting was postponed. In addition, please remember that we had students who were unable to perform on the evening of the Board of Education meeting as planned. Please note that we never want to be in a situation where our students feel threatened or concerned. For that, I believe we can all agree. So that brings me back to tonight. We anticipate hearing from our union representatives. However, we are hoping that everyone maintains a level of professionalism and decorum. And lastly, we need to adhere to the 84 person occupancy limit in this meeting because of fire registrations. I thank you for your attention and hope that this can remain consensual so that we can get to an agreement. Nobody here is stopping that. But we need to conduct the business of the board, and we intend to do it. Thank you. OK. We're going to move on to communications from the public. 
There is no legal requirement to recognize public comment at meetings of the Board of Education. However, the Board recognizes the critical importance of community discourse and involvement in the education of Mount Vernon's children, and accordingly, members of the public are invited to speak at each regularly scheduled Board meeting subject to the terms of the Board policy. Please state your name, address, and the organization, if any, you represent. A speaker must register in advance by no later than 4 p.m. the day of the meeting by contacting the district clerk in person at 165 North Columbus Avenue, Mount Vernon, New York, by phone at 914-665-5235 or by email. The board welcomes all respectful comments, whether praise or criticism. However, identifying and criticizing a specific student, parent, teacher, administrator, other Mount Vernon education official, or employee is strictly prohibited. Any such complaint must be presented and addressed through the proper administrative channels. Each speaker is allowed three minutes to speak. Up to one additional minute may be used for the speaker to summarize and conclude their remarks. If appropriate, board trustees and or the superintendent or other staff members at the direction of the superintendent may immediately respond to a speaker's remarks. Our first speaker is Laura Dupree. Laura Dupree. I don't think she was one of the here. Yeah, I had to be 86. I have a source can't speak. Melvin, Melvin, Melvin Campbell? Melvin Campbell. <laughs> Smith, board trustees, and my colleagues and constituents, I just want to say good evening. Um, I know a lot of the board members up there, we kind of like family, we know each other's family. Mr. Mitchell, Ms. White, Ms. Saunders, respect you all, Dr. Dorgett, you know we got a history. Um, I just want to be honest because I think things are getting a little carried away, Dr. Smith. This level of disrespect yes. that is coming towards right. your army of educators yes. with threats, yes. with beefed up security, yes. with emails that are coming out, then retracted, but not even, not even retracted, but they were revised in any way that gave us any solace because once you accuse somebody of something the still is there absolutely so we have to get on the same page this is like one huge family and disagreement is a part of it and just like in a family if, if we disagree we come together and we find a common ground and put our differences aside and work things out. We're all grown-ups. I find it totally dishonest to think that anybody here is a threat to any child, to anybody. That's outrageous. That's totally outrageous and it's almost like breaking news, the disrespect continues. We already know we are waiting for a contract. We all understand that. And most of us know, even if we worked from now on, with the, the next 25 days to the end of the school year, you will not get a memorandum of agreement for each unit. You will not get a ratification. And you will definitely not get that processed and back to payroll to do color checks, balloon checks, summer checks, and all those different things, because you don't payroll God has their own issues. So the disrespect is ongoing. And just one of the things I want to point out that seemed to be a good deal, especially for our teachers, it was a teacher retirement incentive. And I know um, Gus is here, your attorney, dealt with him through a lot of negotiations. I don't understand why the district will save tens of millions of dollars on that retirement and none of that money could have been earmarked to come back and help with current and our future negotiations. That process alone would have took the budget restrictions and the pressure off this year's budget, next year's budget, 
and so on. I would ask that you can go back and reconsider. It, it's not going to affect the payout. We're just looking for some of that money to be earmarked for us to come to the table that will help us in our struggle without having to renegotiate and renegotiate and go through the same common theme of there's no money or there's very little. Because one contract is not going to get us competitive with the surrounding districts. It's going to have to be a trajectory that works, let's say, four to eight years. So I would ask, Dr. Smith, if you could go back and reconsider uh, making an amendment on that retirement system. Our teachers definitely deserve that. They definitely deserve that payment. But if you can go back and make that amendment with a portion of that money, if we save you, let's say, $10 million, why couldn't $5 million come back to aid us in the current struggle that we are dealing with now? Um, also, 1,200 people come to work for the children every day. We are still super disappointed and dissatisfied that a superintendent is making $300,000 to stay home. That is, how do you, imagine how that makes us feel. We have to, we have to start, we have to start with honesty. And we have to deal with the problems. And even if it's going to be detrimental to us, even though the superintendent and the school board are sitting shoulder to shoulder tonight, it needs to be a separation of powers where if something is detrimental to our members, somebody needs to push back yes. and say, wait a minute, that's going to be detrimental to the financial side. Because cordially, we're all respectful to each other in passing, but sometimes when you get behind closed doors and contracts and negotiation, things go awry. So, that is just a simple ask of me. Also, lastly, I would say, I know you do something like superintendent for the day, but you should try to be a special ed teacher for the day. <laughs> or a security officer at the high school for a day. Social worker for a day, a speech therapist for a day, any a TA for the day. Maybe change some diapers and help teach. I know plenty of you have went through those struggles, but you, you have to walk in our shoes. Mr. And there's Mr. no Melvin, need. Mr. Melvin, I have to ask you to please wrap it up because we have, we have a lot more to go. Absolutely. Thank I you. will close on this. Thank, Thank you. you. We all respect each other. There's no need to be thrown around disrespect beefing up security like we're about to create a riot scene in here. I'll end on that. Thank you. Alexander Jean. I've dedicated, I've dedicated 25 years of my life to the children of Mount Vernon to be labeled as a threat. Ms. Jean? Okay. Alex, if you could just state your address or what school you work in, like you just, right. when you come up, state your name and address. My name is Alexandra Jean. I'm a literacy specialist at Trapagan School, and I've been teaching there for 11 years. I care passionately about this district. I care passionately about the children who I teach, and I care very much about my colleagues as well, and I respect them for uh, the way in which they care for the children in their care. And I'm driven to speak today because of my concerns. Over the years, as teachers' salaries have dropped in comparison to the school districts around us, I have watched our schools struggle to replace retiring teachers with any teachers at all. Vacancies in certain fields remain unfilled, not just for a few weeks, but for months and sometimes years. I have seen young teachers at the beginning of their profession accept jobs here and then opt out at the last minute, leaving schools hunting desperately to fill them. I have watched new teachers leave after just a few weeks. Some of our tenured teachers are moving to neighboring districts for better pay. Meanwhile, classes are filled 
with sub after sub before finally a teacher can be hired for the year. It becomes more and more difficult to hire substitute teachers. To deal with the teacher shortage, some classes have been combined, leading to large class sizes. Weeks on in the semester, some teachers have had to fill teacher gaps and begin commuting between two buildings unexpectedly, starting new schedules and additional classes. Our children learning here in Mount Vernon deserve so much better. They deserve fully staffed buildings and teachers who can provide a quality education. They deserve stability and consistency. There is a national uh, shortage of teachers and without competitive and equitable pay, the teacher brain drain will continue. Right now, Mount Vernon School District is the lowest paying school district in Westchester. Ask yourself, if you were a newly qualified teacher looking for a job, would you choose to come to the lowest paying district? Or would it be your last choice? Do we want Mount Vernon to be the bottom of the pile option? A five year plan must be developed to attract and retain teachers. As a Title I coordinator, I understand the value of the teaching programs provided for our students, but our most important resource of all is the teachers delivering these programs. Good teachers are the best investment a district can make. They make the content interesting, they motivate their students to learn. Research shows that teachers have two to three times the impact on student achievement of any other school factor, including services, facilities, and even leadership. And that's Isaac M. Opper, 2019 data. They are the number one asset. They pass on knowledge, foster critical thinking, inspire and open student minds. They set the classroom atmosphere to promote learning. They act as role models. Teachers mentor their students. They nurture and support. They create a safe and caring space where students can express themselves, share their concerns, and seek guidance. It has been said that there isn't enough money to give teachers a better salary, but that really isn't true. It's a matter of changing the priorities in the allocation of funds. If we want a bright future for the children of Mount Vernon, it is time to offer competitive, fair and equitable pay for teachers. <laughs> Together, let's build a bright and promising future for all our students. Thank you. Yeah. Erica Peterson. Members, acting superintendent, cabinet members, the community, and most of all, our teachers that are inside this building and outside as well. Are we good? Okay. My name is Erica Peterson, and I reside here in Mount Vernon. When I was asked by some teachers to come and speak today, I immediately said yes, because I am grateful to the Mount Vernon Federation of Teachers for endorsing my run for, for school board but most of all because I come from a family full of educators and school administrators. The women and men we have here tonight and watching from home deserve a contract that will stop the mass exodus from our district. Anytime you have teachers obtaining their tenure, then leaving because they would rather risk a three year probationary period in another district than deal with the lack of a contract and resources here in our district is alarming. Between this and the massive resignations, there are schools where lunch monitors are covering special education classes because they don't have a teacher available. On the board docs tonight, there are eight teacher resignations and three of them are special education teachers. This is outrageous. As the daughter of a retired educator and principal and serving in my own former role as a substitute teacher for this district, I know exactly what it's like to take your own money that you need for your own family and need to spend it on your students to make sure they get the best out of a lesson or to simply make sure they have shoes that fit them. Yes. According to this new budget, 
We have over a quarter million dollars of taxpayers' money to continue to pay the salaries of two superintendents. According to this new budget, we have a half a million dollars in taxpayers' money to increase the legal fees for this district. <laughs> According to this new budget, we have about $1 million to increase the line to pay for students to attend charter schools. Well, where is the money for a contract for our teachers and security officers? To, <laughs> to see that Trump-like message from the district today about this meeting that said, and I quote, Please note that our students were unable to perform on Tuesday evening during the meeting because they felt threatened by staff and were tearful. Who never thought that was appropriate to send out to the public about our very own teachers that I send my children and have been sending my children for the past 13 years to for seven hours a day? Shows you how great the disconnect is. Yes. <laughs> Switching topics now. I believe that when you take your seat as a school board trustee, you are bound by a code of ethics. A code of ethics that prohibits you from disclosing personal student information. And you can look down all you want. I'm going to make myself extremely clear. No matter how desperate and vindictive you get, the ability to go beyond these doors and violate a disabled student's right to privacy under the United States Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act is unacceptable and deplorable. If you aren't decent enough to protect the children of this district, then you're not decent enough to sit in that seat and you should be removed. We want trustees with integrity and decency, not those that will waddle in the mud of the pig pen. You stated last Tuesday that integrity is what you do when no one is watching. Well, if violating a disabled student's privacy is what you do when no one is watching, then you can keep your version of integrity. Because I have too much integrity it's when it comes to protecting the children of this community. Jennifer Rudensky. Jennifer Rudensky. Oh, she couldn't come. Okay. Andrea Seawall. She couldn't come. She was 89. <laughs> Modesta. Rosa. Remember to state your name, address, or organization. Modesta Curzio Spies, 805 Delano Road, Yorktown Heights. Good evening, board members, members of the cabinet, Dr. Smith, and all my fellow MVFT colleagues. <laughs> my name is Modesta Curzio Spies, and I've been a fourth grade teacher um, for 26 years in this district. I am currently employed at Lincoln Elementary School, and I am also a union rep. And I am the MVFT. Here we go. Yeah. I am here tonight because I want to discuss the definition of dignity. The definition of dignity is the state or quality of being worthy of honor and respect. With that being said, we, the MVFT, do not feel that we are afforded dignity. Here are some examples in which we, as MVFT members, are not shown the honor and respect that the word dignity implies. Working nearly two years without a contract, which is a written or spoken agreement, especially one concerning employment, we, the MVFT members, still abide by the terms of a contract, even though we are working without one. Payroll. For nearly three years, the MVFT has been dealing with the department that is clearly not equipped to correct the many issues created by their own making. And then to add insult to injury, members are not given the courtesy of emails being answered or return phone call and sometimes waiting several months to even receive a response. No substitute teachers. Since COVID, the Mount Vernon City School District has had a severe lack of substitute teachers. As a result, 
Not only are classroom teachers responsible for their own students, but now the students from classes that have been split up. The Mount Vernon City School District is saving thousands of dollars and we are not being compensated for additional children that we are asked to take care of on a daily basis. Technology. The infrastructure in this district is substandard and cannot support the implementation of all the online programs, often leaving teachers to scramble, putting in work orders, troubleshooting issues that are beyond the scope of our expertise. And frankly, it's not part of my job description. After 26 years of experience, I believe I have a pretty good idea when a student requires extra help. Yet, each year, I write up students to get tested, Three minutes and each up. year, I am told that my instincts are wrong. Yeah. Again, I ask you, is this how a veteran teacher is shown dignity? Hourly rate. Mount Vernon's hourly rate has not increased in years. Staff members deserve to be compensated fairly to work the programs that benefit the children. One last point. Lifelong learners. I have to make this one point. As a 26. She has, she has one more minute to speak. Excuse me. Excuse me. We seconds. speak about nurturing lifelong learners. The Mount Vernon City School District at present has so many vacancies. Younger teachers aren't making long-term commitments. On a daily basis, TAs and security guards provide the constant for, t uh, for the children in our city. Time Beyond is providing... No, you took 10 seconds from her. With all due respect, I was interrupted more than once. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. If you don't mind, if you could just wrap it up, please. Could we have other speakers? Yeah, I'm going to say one more thing. Thank we you. are teachers, nurses, psychologists, social workers, care work, caregivers. Our dedication to the students in this city deserve dignity. The way the Mount Vernon City School District can show us respect and dis dignity is by negotiating a fair contract now. Berna James. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, board members, Dr. Smith, community members, teachers. I'm right with you. I'm a former New York City teacher. I know my question is not going to be answered to next month, but it's about the budget. That's what the rules say. It's about the budget. You said that the framework was for the academic, the social, the emotional, and the safety of our children, of our staff in the building. I was concerned when I heard the gentleman talk about we were using people in-house to do certain of the repairs in the building. Because the question came, who inspects the buildings in this district? Is it not the building department that is doing the codes over? So if you're having people that are not certified, where's the safety component in that? Then I thought about 30 years ago when I used to be in these board meetings on the regular, when Ken Sylvester was a board member and he was an accountant in DOE as his profession, he pushed that the contracts would be bid for any construction in the building. So when you get back to this, anybody in the building can do the work, safety comes to mind with that. How is that safe? And does the building department actually um, inspect the school buildings? 
those are my questions on that end. Next end, my next question is, how does one become a vendor? Because my name is Vernon James, but I have a business called Letitia Gotash. And I want to do business with the district, so I wanted to know exactly how that, does that happen. Is there something in writing that one can look at? Because I've gotten that I go to the superintendent. Well, I did that since February of last year. And I just got a request in May from February of last year about something. So I wanted to know which step did I miss. So is there a step-by-step -step somewhere written down for vendors, how do we do business with the district? So I wait for two weeks to get the answer, right? All right, thank you. I did it in two minutes. Dylan Crump. Not here. Not here. Mateus Vasquez. Vasquez. Hello, my name is Matias. I'm in sixth grade at Hamilton, and I'm the I'm and I'm on the student advisory council. It has been two weeks. It has been two years since our teachers have asked for a better contract. Has a change been made? No. My teacher does the best and more for all her students. She's in crutches. Did she stay home and let us have a day where we did not learn? No. Even though she was almost incapable of walking, she still came and, talk and taught our peers and I what we needed to learn. You make the teachers look like the bad guys when you say, quote, Please note that our students were unable to perform on Tuesday evening during the meeting because they felt threatened by the staff and were tearful. Not once were the students tearful. Not once did they feel threatened. I was here and I feel happy to support the teachers. Tell. If I'm afraid of anything, it's losing my great teacher. Stop trying to make the teachers seem as if they are in the wrong. The slogan was, for the sake of all children, yet the only ones that really follow, followed its principle were the teachers. Yet they get treated as if they do not deserve a fair contract, as if they have done nothing for my peers and all students. Now I can say, now I can see why the slogan is no longer for the sake of all children, because if it really were, you would give our teachers what they deserve, and that is a better contract. I would like to give the rest of my time to David Israel. Thank you. Hello. You're allowed to gift time, no. um, so I'm going to take a moment as the... Okay, as so you have one minute, sir. Well, we have two left. So I am an officer of the Mount Vernon Federation of Teachers. I am the treasurer, and I am proud to be one of the four officers that helps lead this incredible group of people behind me. What I am not happy about is when students across this district and their parents opened up the home page and we all received emails that said we scare our students. MVH members do not scare kids. We encourage, we teach, we support, we enlighten, we counsel, we feed, we mentor, we educate, we inspire, we provide, and we lead. But we do not scare. Students are not scared of MVFT members. They look to us for guidance, for care, for supplies that we pay for ourselves, for food that we buy them, for the clothing they wear to school. They look to us for someone to talk to. They help mental support and emotional support. It was said by somebody a few weeks ago in this very room that we are the bread and butter of the district. We are what makes it possible on a daily Miss basis up. for the children of Mount Vernon, I'm wrapping up, for the children of Mount Vernon to feel safe and cared for. We look after our students and we provide what we hope others offer our own children at home. We thank parents for entrusting us with their children and we would never do anything to harm or break that bond that we have with them. We did not put students in the room last time 
25 minutes early to stand there when you were not even in the room with them. We want the best for all of our students. We are the teachers, we are the teaching assistants, and we are the security officers that care for Mount Vernon's children every day. Talia Lanley. Raise my mic. Please also note that you cannot give your time. Okay. Thank you. I need all my time. <laughs> Hello, my name is Thelia Langley. I am one of the MVFT pre K to 8 vice presidents. And I stand before you today not only as a representative of the educators of our district, but as the voice of the very heart and soul of our educators, educational system, the teachers. For two long years, we've endured the uncertainty, the stress, and the disrespect that comes with an unsettled contract. Two years of tirelessly, tirelessly pouring our hearts out into the education and well-being of our students, while our own professional and financial futures remain uncertain, and enough is enough. We are not here to beg for handouts or plead for special treatment. We are here to demand respect and recognition, and we deserve, the de uh, we deserve as dedicated professionals who shape the future of our society. We are the ones who spend countless hours planning lessons, grading papers, mentoring students long after the final bell has rung. We are the ones who sacrifice our own time, resources, and time, even our, and, and sometimes our, even our mental and physical well-being to ensure that every child in our classroom has the opportunity to succeed. And yet, despite our unwavering dedication, what do we have to show for it? Two years of stagnant negotiations and broken promises, Two years of watching other districts around us settle their contracts and move forward while we're left behind wondering if our own livelihoods are hanging in the balance? Let me be clear. This is not just about us. This is about the future of our schools, our community, and most importantly, our students. How can we expect to attract and retain the brightest and best educators when we cannot even provide them with the basic security of a fair and timely contract? How can we expect our students to thrive in an environment when their teachers are undervalued and overworked? The time for excuses and delay is over. We demand action and we demand it now. It is time for this board to prioritize the needs of its teachers and students above all else. It is time to put aside petty politics and personal agendas and to do right for the future of our district. It is not time to resort to low-brow tactics by launching a smear campaign against the MVFT using your network to per um, perpetuate an image that the members were threatening children's sense of security. That was cheap, and it created an atmosphere of distrust. Right. So I implore you, members of the school board, listen to our voice and heed our call. Settle this teacher contract without further delay. Show us that you value and respect the hard work and dedication of your educators. Show your students that their education is worth fighting for. The time for action is now, and the eyes of the entire community are upon you. Don't let us down. Thank you. Janice Fowler. Good evening. Jan Janice, remember to say your name and address. Got it. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Janice Pollard. I'm a third grade teacher at Pennington School and also one of the pre-K-8 MVFT vice presidents. I'd like to begin by thanking members of the MVFT who have showed up to the negotiations table for every meeting with the district. My colleagues who have stood up here week after week, and my colleagues that continue to show up to work every single day. 
I'd also like to thank the community members who have supported the MVFT, not only during this difficult time, but those who have always shown support and respect. I'd also like to begin by quoting the cover of Time Magazine from September 24, 2018. Yes, I said that correctly, 2018. The cover read, I have a master's degree, 16 years experience, work two extra jobs, and donate blood plasma to pay the bills. I'm a teacher in America. Educators have been expressing for years that we are hurting financially. You may recall me speaking at one of last year's board meetings, giving a speech titled, Did You Know? I stand before you this evening with another message titled, Did You Know? Part two. <laughs> Did you know that all MVFT members continue to show up every day without a fair, settled contract. For two years, as a matter of fact, that's over 300 days. That's disrespectful. Did you know that we still show the same professionalism and love for our students and families even though we do not have a fair, settled contract. Did you know that we still use our own money for supplies and materials, even though we do not have a fair, settled contract? We continue to feel unappreciated and ignored, to say the least. We ask, what's taking so long? Do they care? Do we matter? Did you know that we're not asking for anything except what we deserve? One minute left. Plenty of time. Fairness. The fact that too many professional, amazing, MBFT members have left the Mount Vernon City School District after years of being here. What will the district do without the rest of us? The Mount Vernon City School District will not and cannot function without its backbone, the MBFT. Put yourselves in our classrooms, school hallways, bank accounts, and wallets Thank you. and settle a fair contract now. Did you know that we're supposed to be partners, support each other, because we are all here for one reason, children. Losing dedicated people has to mean something. Actually, it should mean everything. Time is up. Thank you. And that ends our public comments for tonight. Yes. Mr. Russell? Make sure you only give me three minutes because I want to be like everybody else. Okay. You can say a lot. You can say a lot more than we do. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I, I made that comment because I didn't want to get more time than anyone else. And I should play by the rules like everyone else. And so that's what I'm going to do. So any thought? And so part of playing the rules was being quiet and letting you speak. So I hope you can play by those rules. OK, so I've heard a lot today. I, I don't think that is, is unbeknownst to anyone here that we're in the negotiation and we're trying to determine what the word fair means. Fair is a conclusion. 
but we're trying to determine what it means for both sides. I've heard the gentleman in the back uh, that spoke first. Uh, he presented ideas. I would say present that to your leadership. Have your leadership come to the table. Present those ideas. That's why you have leadership. That's why you have four, five, six people in the room. And then we'll respond to that. If it's doable, you hear back. If it's not doable, hopefully you'll hear that too. So that's what we intend to do, and that's what we'll keep on doing. But let's speak to what happened the other day. I think that there are things in life that we intend to do, and they have different impact. So there's intention and impact. I think the intentions was well to come out and voice your opinion, whether it was 87 or 78 or 46. But there was an impact. And to think that it wasn't an impact because either you didn't interview a particular students or you didn't have contact with particular students or it's beyond you to think that teachers, police, lawyers are people too. And when young folks see you act out of what they're used to, that they can either one, question what that is or feel fearful of what that is, I ask that you rethink that. So. Anybody that didn't get a chance to speak today because you were yelling out that was 87 or 86, there are people here that didn't speak. No one got up and let those 87 or 86 come in to take their seat and rotate. So there's always options to be heard. Use all your options. We speak from fact. We don't speak from opinion. And Thank you. We will continue to negotiate, and we'll continue to do that in good faith, and we'll continue to define what the word fair means. And you can continue to show up, and you can continue to voice your opinion. But we will do it in a respectful way. Security was called, and police were here to make sure that we're within the confines of the law, whether it is fire hazard or anything else, and that will continue to happen. We thank you for showing up. Keep on showing up. We'll keep up showing up at the table, and your leadership will keep up showing up at the table, and we'll go from there. Thank you. So my name is Royce Russell. I'm in-house counsel for the district. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Russell. And then we're going to move on to superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. I thank you all for being here this evening. I want to thank everyone for supporting the budget. Thank you, Mount Vernon voters. I also want to congratulate the four members that was voted by the community to serve on the board. They are as follows. Re-elected, Wanda White. Re-elected, Helene Thompson Jenga. Elected and sworn in member, Donna Marable. And elected Chris McDonough. I look forward to continue working with those that's been on the board, but also the newly elected. And we will see our full board in July. I just have two brief things that I want to say. I want to remind everyone about the fundraiser on June 2nd, 2024. Um, the co-founder, Sheila Johnson of BET, was the first African-American billionaire, and she'll be here to speak. You could find the QR code on the website. Also, no place for hate. On Wednesday, May 29th, 2024, we are encouraging families to walk their children to school in a show of, of unity against hate, 
bullying, bias, and acts of unkindness. We are asking everyone to wear a white or maroon t-shirt on this day. And that ends the superintendent's report. We're going to move on to committee reports. All right, as we go on to committee reports, we start with my right, from my right side, Trustee Gale. Oh, if you could turn on your mic, please. Yeah, I, I did attend the May 14th, the IDA meeting. Um, unfortunately, I don't have my notes with me today, so I'll bring it to the next meeting. Trustee Jenga. Yes, we met with um, the policy board uh, Monday, and we met with the security board um, committee, sorry, on Tuesday. Other than that, um, no, I don't have anything else to speak about. Trustee Saunders? I don't, I don't have anything right now. Thank you. Okay. Trustee Mitchell? Trustee Mitchell. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> facilities uh, had their meeting uh, just a couple days ago, so we covered uh, several things. Uh, everything from, you know, head custodians checking all windows to make sure we don't have broken windows and to make sure that the rescue windows were labeled and things like that accordingly, which the rescue window situation was handled before we got certif certificate, certif uh, certification of occupancy from the fire uh, inspections. Um, we had some clean outs and things that were done over at uh, uh, certain schools. Mike Raguza and Mark Romundi, thank you for having to sit down with us to discuss all that. I don't see Mike in here right now. Um, so the ceiling tiles, uh, were replaced uh, in one of our buildings uh, due to some leakage. Uh, we had to replace some insulation. All of that was done in-house. We went over to Parker. We had to walk through a Parker with the uh, PTA president, uh, the PTA president for uh, Parker School, um, and we were looking at a, a bunch of different things as far as damaging uh, some of the, one of the rooms uh, because of water damage, floor, ceiling, and wall. And uh, to remedy some of that, we had some, uh, the leak was located on the roof of that building in that area. And the next steps are scraping and uh, cutting up some floor to replace the buckling floors. Um, the, uh, the floor in the gymnasium at Williams School is well underway. It's already been uh, sanded down and uh, they're doing all of it over. They're gonna have the liners come in and repaint. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. I asked Mike to give me a walkthrough when that's done. Uh, back at Parker, again, the ceiling holes, because when they, f when they ran wiring, new wiring through, they left gigantic gaping holes in the ceiling for some reason. But uh, we're working to get that all done, and that's gonna be in-house from my understanding as well. Um, the security com uh, committee also met. Uh, at this moment, as of that call, we had 103 full-time uh, security guards, one per diem. We need five more. There are four that were in HR for onboarding, and they should be starting in September. Um, one other, regarding security, back to Parker. A vestibule at Parker was talked about, not a vestibule so much, but at least a, t a desk 
uh, for the computer with a chair so that our security guard can sit down and they can have some sort of uh, movable uh, desk so that it's not a fire code issue, but so that we can kind of mirror what we have at Williams School and give the security guard something better than just a free floating desk. And he's like six foot three and he's bent all the way over his guys trying to see the things that he's, uh, what's on the screen. Um, <clears throat> They we're checking on desks and things like that can that can uh, suit the purpose. Door buzzers, uh, something that was another topic that was discussed. It's a technology follow-up. So, Mr. Ramirez, we're going to be talking to you about uh, door buzzers for uh, for our schools, so that the security guards can uh, activate those from a one location, and uh, we can uh, have that type of split from the main mezzanine that area between doors if we can. That's the topic that we've been talking about. Security cameras, making sure the security cameras are streaming to the security guards. Uh, in addition to secondary, the principals that may want them in their offices, that is another thing that we discussed. It's more important, I think that we discussed it, it's more important to have security cameras streamed to the security guard offices. Uh, that, that should be first and foremost. Um, we also talked about uniforms. We've got three-year contract that's been solidified, Mr. Romundi, we talked about. And uh, we're looking to get things kicked off so our workers can have their uniforms, our food service workers can have their shoes and supplies in time for September instead of later on in November, which has been the hard, a terrible trend. Um, so things are coming along, more to come. I'm going to stop there. Excuse me, I have a quick question, Mr. Ramundi. Um, is there money in a budget for security guards' uniforms? We, we did budget for that, yes. We did. Okay, because I was given a comment the other day that um, security guards are not given allowances or their proper uniforms because there's no money. That's why I'm asking a question. And I had another question also. Um, I understand it's very important to have the security cameras for the security guards, but if a security guard is not at, a, at their post, um, is it a problem for the principal to make comment to that? I don't understand the question. Like, because um, trustee said that the cameras being in the principal's office, that they can see. You understand what I'm saying? No, it, it wouldn't be a comment for the building principal to have cameras in their office because, you know, the more appropriate people to have access to that just really cuts down on the response time. So no, security officers and usually the building head and their designee would have access to those cameras. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee White. Um, Trustee um, Mitchell? Mitchell gave the report. I forgot mine's at home. Okay. Trustee Kelly, VP Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to, um, we met for the education committee meeting, and I want to say what a wonderful job Dr. Doggett, Dr. Jones, uh, Dr. Gabaton did, Mary Beth Rhodes, uh, in actually supporting this greenhouse and grow bag initiative. We're partnering uh, with the AKA, which is Donna Jackson. I especially want to thank uh, Superintendent, Acting Superintendent Veronica K. Smith, <laughs> for making it possible, for supporting the vision, and her principals, her administrators, um, especially for recommending Mr. Caprio uh, and supporting his work that he's doing in the greenhouse presently with no pay. He's showing up and making sure the grow bags and the greenhouse, there was produce to put in. And they had their um, event on the 23rd which was, was it today? today. God, I'm, <laughs> I forgot. It seems like another day for me because I never stop. Okay, but I really appreciate the fact the kids seem to enjoy it, and I would like to turn it over to Dr. Doggett if he would cheap to kind of share the events. Um, but I am so pleased with the fact that we've come together as a community, and there are people who are doing extra with no fanfare. They just show up, they do their job, 
and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, good evening. Um, well, today we had our culminating event uh, with the Grow Bag. Just a little bit of background about the Grow Bag Initiative, and I'll be really brief. Um, the Grow Bag Initiative in the Mount Vernon City School District focuses on promoting sustainable living while emphasizing the importance of taking care of the environment. So students may grow bags today. What a grow bag is, it's a planter that is used for growing medium-sized plants. So over the last four months, there were plants grown in a greenhouse by Mr. Um, Carl Caprio and his team. And today we had four schools, um, Lincoln, Graham, Mount Vernon High School, and Rebecca Turner Academy students go and look at the um, actual plants. They actually transport, transplanted them from a, one area to another. So what we wanted to do was give them a hands-on experience with the grow rags, looking at the plants and the types of plants that they are. As a peep, as a, I guess I would say, looking forward to what's going to come up for the next year. So that was the first step that we've done. So I want to thank Trustee Kelly for making sure that this happened. She's really been on it. Um, as far as CNI, 1,200 seeds were planted in the greenhouse this year. Um, the CNI department created a, a curriculum mapping document, gray band, with specific lessons that matched the grow bag to the actual curriculum. So what they're actually doing is the hands-on approach for this actual grow bag initiative. Great news. I also didn't, I don't know if I um, thanked, there was uh, Ms. Carpus, who was also instrumental in making sure the seedlings, she actually planted uh, the seedlings and helped uh, Cap Mr. Caprio and uh, Donna Jackson. And if Michael I, Malisey, Michael yes, Malisey as well. Yeah. So we have, and, and the team at the other schools, because this is like a pilot program that we're hoping to expand through the district. And I think this is important to support the uh, science curriculum and math. Yes. Being the whole, the whole gigantic. Literacy, yeah. Right, okay. So thank you, that, that's thank my you. report. There was other things, but I'm for short. I'm excited, <laughs> I'm excited. We've heard about Dr. The Jones, back. wait, I, I, so I'm, before, if you have time for questions, and I have time to talk about the summer program. Okay, go ahead. Get two minutes <laughs> because because I also want to thank the district for putting together a very thoughtful summer program. I was a little concerned. Um, we had heard some that there were issues with buildings never being closed. You guys heard us, our concerns, and uh, enacted a program that I think is going to be really special. Uh, the virtual uh, summer school program. I think, Dr. Jones, would you just speak a little bit about it so they know what's going on in the district? Um, good afternoon, everyone. So we know that as soon as summer rolls in, many of our students go off to different places. And so we want to continue learning throughout the summer. And we, the team, actually worked on a summer bucket list, which um, students will be able to log in to live presentations a couple times a week. And, and also, we have identified four countries. So a country will be featured each, each week. So they have snacks from each country that they will be making with their families. And um, they will have music, dance, and art live sessions. They will also have um, cook the culinary arts. Um, we, are, we are partnering with the, um, the culinary arts department as well to partake in this. But most of all, their ELA reading and math will be will be, will take place as well so they will continue to use iReady throughout the summer iReady is still is available to us until the end of the summer we pay for it so we're going to use it and uh, that's it in a nutshell so is that k through 12 or k through 8 or um that's the summer bucket list challenge is k through 8. thank you very much i really appreciate the hard work on thank all the you. staff's thank part you. i think there was questions I have a question about the aviation program the district offers. I don't think there's have heard enough about it, but I know it's here. Can you talk to us about that, Dr. Jones? So last school year, we added a course to our um, course catalog, aviation. Yeah. And um, the, there's a company that it's totally free to the district. I want to emphasize that the only thing we have to do is to make sure our teachers um, 
first time teachers get trained. And so um, just this past couple of months, we sent uh, one teacher. We have two teachers now trained for, we have the ninth grade curriculum and the 10th grade curriculum. Next year, we will have to send another teacher to be trained for the 11th grade curriculum. And so we have reached out to um, Westchester Airport and we are partnering with um, different entities in that area in, uh, around us. Um, just today, I got um, Donna Jackson gave me another connection. And so the program is growing. And out of our, we're not done yet. This is just our first year. And we have students who have um, participated in this program just for this one year. This, part, this student has applied to um, Vaughan College, and he has been accepted, given some given some money and so that's where we'll be taking up um he was featured actually so if you go to your website you'll hear about nate a little bit more um but i am here to say that this is a very good move especially when students can meet you in the hallway and said are you dr jones yes and reach for my hand to shake why because my attendance was horrible but because i'm now a part of the aviation program my, I have perfect attendance. Wow. So he's coming. He's coming. So I am um, very happy that we are looking at all the possibilities for our students. I am happy for the barbers. I'm happy for um, those in culinary. But we have other things out there that we need to provide opportunities and access to, uh, for our students. Are we aware of any? Are we aware of any other schools close by in our neighboring districts that have an aviation program like ours? Yeah, there are others that we are that have done more than us. I mean, they are certified, um, state certified programs, and so we are working with, alongside some of them so that we can eventually. But you don't just after one year get a cert uh, a certification. A certified pathway for aviation. You have to have the, you have to have a, a program. You have to go through the system, just like when Barbarin started as an elective. Aviation is starting as an elective and will eventually grow into a pathway. I firmly believe that one of these days, on one of my flights, I will have a Mount Vernon student <laughs> as my pilot. That I can dream. <laughs> thank you. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. So, that is uh, it's so exciting. Mitchell, Trustee Mitchell uh, Newberg has a, a program, aviation program. That's such good news. I'm so excited about that. And yes, I'm working on cybersecurity and financial literacy. I've been saying that since I came here, and I'm working on the partners. So more to come on those. So those students will be working with the CIA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so now I just have uh, just a couple comments on uh, budget. So I just want to say that um, the school board and the city has come to an agreement with um, the interest that is due on the 11.7 million. We settled with 6%. So the city owes the school district 2,112,000. $112,000 for interest on the $11.7 million. And the city said that they cannot pay the full amount. Um, so we agreed that they will pay us an additional $100,000 um, monthly. So now the city will be paying us $450,000 monthly. $350,000 um, $50, is from the $11.7 million that we agreed that um, since they cannot pay the lump sum, and now they added the 100000 So we are expecting $450,000 monthly from the city. That just the agreement that we signed um, just a month ago. Can I ask one question about that? Um, by the end of this school year, the city is going to owe us again, right? By the end of the school year. So that's going to get tacked on to the balance of the eleven million that they paid, plus this extra hundred thousand for this interest that they still owe. Correct. But I think that on, on that note, it would be due two years from now. As long as we file 
timely accordingly yes. with certified documentation. Correct. Okay. As long as we file the documentation um, certified on timely, untimely manner as well. Okay. Thank you. I, I don't understand. So you said that to, I think they're going to owe us the 11-7 at the end of June, July 1st. No, the 11 7 they're paying as an installment. The new, the new 11 7. It's going to be a new. It starts a new cycle. It starts a new cycle. The they're going to owe us two years from now. Two years. It's every two years that they owe the taxes. I thought it was every year. Yeah, no, it's every two years. Right? Um, is, is it every year or is it every two years? No, additional. Not, not the old taxes, not the back taxes. We're talking about new taxes that's coming due. No, no, the, the, the city, what the city is going to owe us. Speaking city, to the mic, city had owed us Mike, 11 Sandra, point, the, the city had owed us 11.7 million, and there was an agreement that they would pay 350,000. Then, as you said, they make an additional agreement for 100,000. The 450,000 will start in July of this year. So that will reduce that 11.7. Currently, they paid 5.4 million. Right. So that's the balance that they paid out of the 11.7 um, right. million. Mm -hmm. But the question is, um, when would the new taxes, right, mm -hmm. is due from the city? When we when we send out the certification, mm -hmm. letting them know that how much taxes are, is due. When it, would that we, be? We will we will send it out. We add it to the info tax system. I got the assessment just today from Stephanie Vanderpool. You're talking about 24, 25 levy, right? Yes. Yes. That when will is that start due? July and January is in two in two um, periods. July and next payment is January. So it's 2025. 2025. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 2025. Is that the question? No, I don't. I'll, no. I'll figure it out. I'm, I'm confused. So the money that the 11.7 is what years? No, that's, that's prior back to 20. No, that's, listen, that's listen prior to, to 2020. What year prior is it? Prior to 2020. I know. What are the years that that 18, 19, 18 and 20. So speak to that. You're talking about what? What's going to be due next? Yes. Then what's going to be due next, Sandra? 24, 25. What and happened? when would it be due? The first half will be due in July 1st. No, no, no. no. I'm, don't, don't they owe us back taxes? That's, that was 18, The 19? back taxes in arrears the, is being... Um, every day if a, a taxpayer comes into the building to pay taxes and they're okay. told that taxes. they have taxes in arrears, they pay it as they come in right. once they, so they have so, so let me ask, let me just see. Okay. So for four years we had a controller that didn't pay us the taxes, mm -hmm. our back taxes. So now the city is starting to pay us our taxes, correct? So Just prior to 2020. Right. So, so they're paid one year, that's the 11.7, is that right? That's not one year. That's a combination prior to of years. 20, it's a combination of what the, was owed prior what's, to year what's the, 2020. So, so the taxes that are being owed 2020, 2021, 21, 22, and 22, 23. Is due in 2025. They're not due, they're in arrears. That means all the balances that have not been paid. Usually when you levy a tax for a particular tax year, the first payment is due July 1st of that particular year. So for instance, when we levy the taxes for 2425, it will, uh, the first half is due July 1st. Mm -hmm. The second half, January 1st mm -hmm. to January 31st. So those taxes in arrears has not been paid. Mm -hmm. So they're not, they, you don't call them that they were due, they're past due. Mm -hmm. It's like late to me. Okay. 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 Right. okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. All right. Um, so I also want to mention, because I know um, a lot of people in the, the community um, mentioned and requested that they get a line-by-line -line budget. I just want to address the line-by-line -line budget. Now, the line-by-line -line budget that everyone is requesting is a worksheet. And so um, <laughs> when I got on the finance, on, on the budget um, committee, I said the line-by-line -line budget is a spreadsheet and should have never been shared with the community over all these years because it's just full of formulas, it's a moving target, and it should have never been shared. So I ask 
if we could get a budget that really outlines what the school district budget sh um, really is and should look um, appropriately shared with the community. Now, the budget now that's up on the website is, I know everyone would say it's comprehensive. However, it details um, our three parts budget. It also tells the, the reader, which is the, the community members, the revenue that's projected, and it also has um, the expenditure of the budget. The expenditure is the line by line that everyone was asking for in this budget. So it's laid out professionally in this budget. And so this is a better presentation when you give to the community, right, than this worksheet. This is a worksheet that, have, that should have never been shared with the community. So if everyone wants to go now and look at the budget, I know you're, com you, you're comfortable in reading this, but this is a moving target, and it changes daily. Now you have, we paid, the, when I say we, the, the um, school district paid for software that the budget should be inputted in, and this is what the results should look like professionally. Any chief financial officer, this is what they produce, a professional budget, not a worksheet. And going forward, this is the presentation that should be given to our Mount Vernon residents. Thank you. Question. Yes. Will we receive that the presentation that's now, and thank you for this presentation that's there now, because unfortunately it didn't get there until about 24 to 36 hours before the people had to vote. But yes, is it, will it be possible for all of us, if, if, we're, if we're trustees, that version that's up now, that's the version that... This is it. I, I'm going to just finish my statement. I, I appreciate you. If that version of the budget, will that be available to the trustees in advance so that we can be fully versed, so that we can vote before it goes to the people starting next year? Yes. That's the question. Yes, Okay, because yes. this and time it, was, it wasn't. It was provided to all the trustees because that's we came in and we all voted on the... That's on the, that version, which version that's right now on the site with the lines was not provided. That's the... That there was not. My question, I just, want to, I just want to understand, will we have it up next year at an earlier time so that the people can review it so they'll be more versed before they go out and vote? Going forward. Going okay. forward. It, I, I, to me, professionalism is paramount in this district. It's about time that we accept mini it's, it's, it's We always, sh everyone comes in here and shortchange us. It's, it, we need to stop. This is not a budget. This is a worksheet that we've been given over the years. A chief financial officer should have never presented the, the public with this, because this is all formulas in this line-by-line -line budget that everyone is asking for. So yes, to your question, Trustee Mitchell, this is how the budget presentation, and this is how it will be presented to the public and to the trustees. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes um, committee reports. Thank you. We're going to move on to old business, follow up on old business. Good evening again. These are the questions from the Tuesday, May 7th board meeting. The first question. In the budget, is there an increase of 20,000 for all administrators? There's not an increase of $20,000 for all administrators. Question number two, why are absentee ballots mailed to seniors? Um, basically, absentee ballots are mailed if it is requested on the application for a ballot and the request is with the allotted time for it to be mailed back to them. If you are permanently ill or disabled, you have a right to receive an absentee ballot for each sub subsequent election without further application. Simply file an application with the Westchester County Board of Elections indicating permanent illness 
or physical disability, you will then automatically receive an absentee ballot for every election until your registration is canceled. If you are permanently sick or disabled and do not reside in a nursing home, assisted living, an absentee ballot will be sent to your address on file. If there are, are any changes, you need to contact the Westchester County Board of Elections. If you are permanently sick or disabled and reside in a nursing home um, in Mount Vernon, the absentee ballots are, are hand delivered by election inspectors and they are available to assist if needed. Once you cast your vote, the absentee ballots are delivered to the district clerk's office at the Board of Education. If you are permanently sick or disabled and did not file with the Westchester County Board of Elections, you can request an application to vote by absentee with the district clerk's office and or request a proxy. If you are registered with Westchester County Board of Elections as a permanently sick or disabled, you will not receive an absentee ballot. Why do, question number three, why do we have three lawyers? We have Ingleman and Smith, they're retained to assist in labor negotiations, personal injury, and other litigations with our insurance management company, as, as you are aware, um, Mount Vernon is self-insured. We have ILO and Canik, they were hired to cover um, the federal investigation regarding grants. We have our in-house counsel who manages all day-to-day -day district legal issues, among other things, which reduces the legal fees. Um, it's efficient, and our counsel advises the superintendent and board members. Why is one of them close to a board members? Employees concerning the, the federal um, investigation regarding grants. Three firms offered their services. One firm withdrew and the board voted to retain Aiello and Canik. Any board member connected to Aiello and Canik was recused from all conversations regarding the selection of the third firm and did not vote on the selection of the firm. In this process, hourly rates was considered. Also, Ingerman and Smith could not serve as counsel because they are essential witnesses to the prosecution and investigation and thus cannot serve as counsel on behalf of the district in this matter. Why are we paying $500 per an hour? The in-house counsel position is not a new position, but has been vacant for two years. The in-house counsel, again, manages the day-to-day -day district legal issues. Um, and so they help in terms of the cost to the district. Why haven't we had a contract, or sorry, why haven't we in two years considered giving teachers a raise? The board has not only considered giving teachers raises, but it has also been actively working with the Mount Vernon Federation for quite some time to provide them with a contract. But any settlement must be one that the district can afford. To this end, the board is committed to ensuring that the settlement reach is a fiscally responsible one. The board firmly believes that the parties must reach a fair and equitable settlement that recognizes both our value teachers and the taxpayers um, of this community. So that's the teachers, the teachers' assistance, and the security. It is also important to note that most teachers have been receiving step increases to their base salaries for the last two years, notwithstanding the expired contract. We look forward to continuing to dialogue with our MVFT as we work towards a settlement. Those were the six questions that we received. Um, any questions from this meeting will be addressed, sorry, during our next board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on to our resolutions. All business? That was, I said I have something. Oh, you have something, we'll be, okay. So for all business, I just wanted to, um, to share that Dr. Smith and I met with Iona University, who is currently teaching artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence with um, Mandela and STEAM. And so we met with the director of um, Iona 
in the STEAM department. And I asked them if they can um, spread the wealth a little bit more throughout the district. I, I requested that they include in their budget this year coming up that if they could um, extend it to two other schools, another middle school and perhaps a high school, another high school. And they told us that they will be looking into their budget because they also shared that program with neighboring schools like St. Michael's and schools in New Rochelle. So we will be meeting with um, the director again, perhaps in June or July, she said. And hopefully they could extend you know, that program to two more schools here in Mount Vernon. So we are hoping that they include the additional schools in their budget because we want to, you know, hopefully all 16 schools will be taught um, the artificial intelligence um, shortly. But for now, they're only in two schools and we advocating for two more schools to come on board. So more to come on that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Do you have any more old business? Okay. Now we'll move on to resolutions. So can I have a motion for 6.1 Human Resources 104A certified? Motion. Second. Questions, concerns, discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. We have a motion for 6.2, approval of human resources resolution, non-certified. Motion. Second. Questions, concerns, discussions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Motion carries. I have a motion for 7.1, authorization to approve PDM consultant to provide academic enrichment services for Emmanuel Children's Mission. Motion. Seven. Questions, concerns, discussions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Motion carries. I have a motion for 7.2, authorization to pay additional staff for Saturday school at all K-8 schools from April 6th to June 15, 2024. Motion. Second. Okay. Questions, concerns, discussions? That was, um, <laughs> How how's the attendance at these um, on Saturday schools at all the different schools? So um, so the attendance was shared with Dr. Smith. That I'm positive has shared it with members of the board. Some schools are doing a lot better than other schools. Um, but the fact that students are benefiting at this time, we wouldn't want to close any program that will impact any of our children. So the building principals and their teams, they are working with parents, making sure parents are aware, encouraging parents on a weekly basis to have their students out. So um, that's where we are with that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay, I have a motion for 8.1, authorization and hiring of staff to conduct the 2024-2025 adult education program. Motion. Second. Questions, concerns, discussions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Can I have a motion for 8.2, approval of student services, pupil personnel services, memorandum number 18, dated May 21st, 2024. Motion. Second. 
Questions, concerns, discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay, I have a motion for 9.1, authorization to rescind RFP number 2022-23-18, architectural engineering for 2024 bond project to re-advertise in the best interest of the district. Motion. Second. Questions, Questions concerns, discussion? Uh, just an understanding, where whenever we rescind the RFP, what normally is the what normally is the reason why we do that? So it could be a, for a variety of reasons. In this case, what was? In it? this case, yeah. excuse me, it was the decision of the RFP committee to go out and cast a wider net to encompass, you know, more MWBEs to bid on the project. Uh, local community architects and that sort of thing to really give everybody an additional uh, fair shot at this project. And this is related to the repair bond that we've been talking about briefly? Correct, uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose? Abstain? Motion carries. Can I have a motion for 10.1 to accept the donations for sound equipment? to Graham School. Second. So donation. Um, questions, concerns, discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. I have a motion for 11.1, .1, approval of the annual budget for the Westchester Putnam School Board Association for the 2024-2025 school year. Motion. Second. Questions, concerns, discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Can I have a motion for 11.2, approval of the 2024-2025 Westchester Putnam School Board Association Board of Directors slate? Second. Questions, concerns, discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. We have a motion for 11.3, authorization to revise policy number 7131, students in temporary housing, McKinney Vento. Motion. Second. Questions, concerns, discussions? Can we, I'm sorry, can we have the understanding why the revision was needed? <coughs> so Title I, was um, audited by the state and they asked for documentation. So the last time the district um, updated the McKinney Vento policy was before the pandemic in 2018, 2019. While we were all during the pandemic, the state made revision and we were two years behind the update for those policies. So the new policy required that we put clear cut how parents are go for dispute resolution. It required that we put the um, job of our McKinney Vento liaison on there. It required that we delineate what is the process when a parent live in Mount Vernon and that child is in a shelter, say in New York City. One of the good thing about updating this policy is we discovered that we get 100% back of this transportation money when that child goes to school in New York City the state is supposed to reimburse us. So we just discovered that and we will be asking for the money that they owe us since we do that for a great many of our making event. So do we have a lot of students? Yes. That to New York City? Currently our making event is 996 students. Um, we are, based on the policy, we are following the law and having dispute resolution, helping our parents who Maybe live in Mount Vernon, but you know the shelter say is in Connecticut. Help them get go to school in Connecticut instead of busing them here to come to school. Which it works both ways. The child will be able to go to school where they live, and it won't cost us as much in terms of transportation. Um, is it possible that we could the trustees could have a just a breakdown of with that many students what the cost is that we're incurring that we will be asking back? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and also, the other thing is, we don't have the 
original policy and the revision attached to this resolution so that we can do a compare or contrast if we wanted to? It's an executive content. I'm not seeing it, and I'm signed in. Okay, if that's the case, then I'll refresh. I'll refresh. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. We have a motion for 11.4, approval of a settlement agreement on behalf of the Newburgh School District and the Mount Vernon City School District. Motion. Second. Questions, concerns, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Oppose? Abstain? Motion carries. We have a motion for 11.5, authorization for approval of letter to said school official. Second. Questions, concerns, discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose? Opposed. Abstain? Abstain. Motion carries. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion. It's a short one. <laughs> Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good night, everyone. Get home safely. Thank you for coming out. <laughs>